Um, well, well uh, thanks very much. Um, I think this is yours. I, I've got one over here. Oh, you've got one over there, right. Okay. Um, well, uh, is that better? Yeah. Yes. Um, thanks for asking me to, to come. And, and um, thanks as a, as a rank and file member giving me this um, privileged position of um, being able to say a few words. And they will be short. And I'll try not to abuse that privilege by being too partial one way or the other in the various discussions that have been held. Um, and, uh, and first of all, uh, well, very first of all, I'm sure you would have been here whether um, some of us had said things or not, because the need is so great uh, for a, a voice and a party of the left to articulate the core socialist ideas that we stand for, to unite people against the austerity program, and to stand for social justice. And, and that demand is so great, and it's been great for decades, that I'm sure you would be here. Um, but I think after this morning, it's really important that we remember just why we are here. And there are so many stories now of homelessness, of poverty, of people who are suffering through the cuts at all levels, through disability, through exclusion, for whatever reason, that we, you must all be um, driven to do something either on your own behalf or on behalf of others. I mean, one, several stories have hit me in the last week or so. Um, you probably read, uh, like I did, about the man who was, um, his contract wasn't renewed, he was sacked from his job, and he was forced to return to the same place to work for nothing, or be sanctioned uh, with his benefits and have them cut. Now, when we have a society in which we force people to work for nothing, what kind of pass have we reached? Um, I met a, a young lad who was um, uh, who was working for an agency, and because he was working for an agency, he had to sign off his benefits. Of course, he didn't get much work through the agency, um, and a typical day was he was phoned at five o'clock in the morning, told to be somewhere for six o'clock, a warehouse to start work. The other side of town, he got there somehow. Six fifteen, he's told, no work today. Go back home. 12-hour shift disappears. And of course, he's, to get his benefits started again is, is a long gap. So what does he do? He's, he's, he's minded to start a bit of shoplifting. Um, and so when people are so scrambling for work, it's reminiscent of the days of the dockers when they were on the cobbles trying to get their card put in front of the, the, the master for work. Um, and what have we come to that we've allowed this, this to happen? We, we, we met a, a young lad... We were doing some research, met a young lad who had got a room through a housing charity. And uh, it was, the room was Dickensian in its, in its pitiful decay. And we said, what's in the... Fr he got a fridge, a very clean fridge, very old fridge, very clean fridge in the corner of the room. He said, what's in the fridge? He opened the door, there was nothing in the fridge. There was nothing, not a pint of milk, not anything. Um, and it appeared he'd, he'd gone several days the week previously without food, for three days without food. The weather was quite warm, and clearly now the choice between food eating and heating is very real. So, I mean, these are the reasons we're here, aren't they? And at the time that all this is going on, the inequality is getting greater and greater. In the US, you may have seen the figures. In the US, this... this <laughs> This staggered me. The wealth of 0.1%, 0.1% is equal to the wealth of 90%. That's amazing, isn't it? 0.1% in the States equals the wealth of 90% of the people in the States because so many families are in debt and carry debt and debt has become part of the way of life. So that's, the, that's why we're here. Um, but many are, many are fighting back, of course, and, and there are many campaigns, and there are trade unions, and people are very active in trade unions, and you all are fighting back, clearly, and, and very active, too. Um, and I think it's very important 
that, w and I know many branches are doing this, but where, where we are fighting back, that we really open our doors to all these other people. Maybe some people organizing charities who don't think of themselves as political. I mean, there's some where I live who are um, engaged in, in helping young, young people with nowhere to live who would otherwise be homeless, helping them find, find a room. Well, I think we need to challenge them and say, OK, you care about this. This is a political issue. Come and discuss with us. Come and share, our, share your opinions on how we change it. And really challenge them to be part of the political debate. And thinking that charity is enough in itself. I mean, as someone said, I forget who, um, charity is no substitute for justice delayed. And I think we, we, there are many people in our cities and in our localities that are involved, churches, um, for an old atheist like me it's difficult to say, but churches, um, charities, campaign groups, and I think we have to challenge them, have a big tent, bring them all in and say, okay, you care about these things, so do we, this is our analysis, what's yours, and how we really, get, don't be content with putting a sticking plaster uh, on things. Um, there have been a number of films, a word from the film community, uh, a number of films like Slavery, um, Pride, um, Made in Dagenham, it's even a musical. Now, I don't see many of those people in the left groups and the left meetings. They'll, they'll make a film about it or they'll put on a musical. I think you should say to them, OK, come and sing us one of your songs and now let's talk about equality of pay. Let's talk about strikes to, uh, to defend our jobs. And, and put, call their bluff. Call their bluff because they're, 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 they're invoking a protest. But I think it's time to say to them, okay, okay, come and show us, put your money where your mouth is and let's really, let's really engage them in it. Of course, there's always the one exception and uh, I was amused to see that uh, great actor and uh, sometime tax exile, Michael Caine, make his political views known. Um, some of you may have seen the quote. He said, um, uh, forgive me for quoting him, but he said, um, We've got three and a half million, I won't do the voice, uh, there are others here who could. Um, we've got three and a half million layabouts on benefits and I'm 76 years old, getting up at 6am to go to work to keep them. That's, uh, that, 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 that's Sir Michael's contribution to the, um, to the debate. Um, but I think it's really important that we hold on to our core analysis. Our core analysis that, that uh, capitalism that has reached this stage of of huge international corporations will never provide a dignified life for ordinary families. It will never provide secure employment. It will never provide uh, care uh, when we're sick and so on. It can't do it because of its harsh competition, its constant drive on labour costs. Um, it is the um, the zero hours contracts and the agency work and the short term contracts. Is capitalism working? It's not capitalism failing, that's how it works. And that's our, our core analysis. And whatever alliances we make, we have to hang on to that. But I think in terms of alliances, I think, obviously, uh, for us, politics is, is, is a big, it, it has many facets. Only one part of that is electoral politics. But for electoral politics, my view is, and I don't know if you share it, my view is that we should, we should maximize the alliance we can make with, with people on the left. Because we've got, to, we've got to grow. If we don't grow, we're sunk. We've got to grow. We've got to maximize our alliance. But hang on to who we are. We don't submerge our, our basic politics. But we do do deals so that we can get a chance of getting heard. I think that's really important. We've had huge in encouragement. <laughs> we've, sorry, I've nearly finished. We have huge encouragement from across um, from Europe, and Europe is a big issue for us. Huge encouragement from meeting Podemos and Syriza. The question is, we w there is a big question on on how a party like Podemos will hang on to its left analysis as it becomes big. And this is, this is a big question because it's easy for us, you know, comparatively small in this room, um, to keep ideologically pretty, pretty on the button. But, but when it gets big, then, then it's a big question. And so that, 
that, that's an issue for them. And I think we have to watch and learn on how they progress. But, but Europe, how we transform Europe, how we transform Europe into a, uh, a community that represents the interests of, of ordinary people is not a neoliberal project, which it is at the moment, doesn't force privatization. And how we transform that Europe into a, a Europe for working class people, that's a big issue. And we need, we need the links with Syriza and Podemos and other parties across Europe. We can only do it if we're international. We can't do it on a, on a national basis. Um, uh, as for the Labour Party, um, the, uh, the, the, the recent attacks on Miliband, of course, that's coming from the right and we know what they are. And, you know, I have no complaint with the way the guy speaks. That's not the issue. Um, the issue is they are still, and of course, inevitably, the party of austerity, the party of privatisation, and, and the, the party that will impose the cuts, keep imposing the cuts. It was very interesting. When, um, uh, when the Tories, only a small issue, but the Tories said they were going to privatise Eurostar because it's making a profit. So, you know, money we could well use. Um, Labour said they had no ideological objection. No ideological objection. Uh, when Royal Mail was privatised, the only objection was the price, not the principle. So we know we can, and, and of course it is the privatising, and in the health service, of course, writ large in the health service, it is, it is because of the privatisation that increases the dominance of the big private corporations.